Let's briefly review the three structures that make up DNA. So first we have a sugar deoxyribose. Then we have a nitrogen base. And the one that you're looking at in particular is adenine. And then we have a phosphate group, or actually, if I were more specific, what you're looking at is a triphosphate. And I'm just going to draw a bond coming out of this O because usually it probably will be attached to something. So let's take what we know about these, these three structures and put it together. So if we put these three units together, we would get what's called a nucleotide. So you can see a nucleotide is made up of the sugar deoxyribose right over here, and then it has the nitrogen base, the adenine, and then the phosphate groups. And I'm just going to add, if we had just the sugar attached to a nitrogen base, that would be called a nucleoside. I'm just going to draw that S in big so that you notice the difference between a nucleotide and a nucleoside. And DNA is going to be made up of these long chains of nucleotides strung together. So let's see how we put together two nucleotides. So I'm just going to make some room. So let's get another nucleotide. So here's, an, here's our second nucleotide. And I'm just going to quickly fill in the carbons on the sugar molecule because you'll see in a moment it's pretty important to keep that in mind. So here's our one prime here. This carbon is two prime. This carbon right over here is three prime, four prime and five prime. And let's fill them out on the next sugar molecule as well. And I'm also going to fill out um, just couple of atoms that we need in order for me to show you what's happening. So I'm going to fill out the OH on the three prime side and actually I'm going to fill in the electrons on that oxygen. And this OH group on our first nucleotide is a nucleophile. It has a, that oxygen has a lot of electrons. It's somewhat negative and it wants to find something positive. And so two of the electrons on that oxygen are going to attack this phosphorus atom, which is a little bit positive because the oxygen's all around it hog its electrons. So it attacks this phosphorus atom. And then the, the phosphate has too many bonds, too many electrons around it. And the electrons from this bond between the phosphate and the oxygen will jump onto the oxygen, breaking that bond. And what is the, the result of what we just saw? So here's what we get. We get our two nucleotides attached to each other with this special bond that I'm gonna circle. And I'll tell you in a moment what that bond is. And then we also have this, um, this group with two phosphates. This is known as pyrophosphate. And I just stuck an H onto the oxygen, but we're not going to get into the details of the pyrophosphate right now. So back to our um, two nucleotides that are attached to each other with this bond. So we call this bond a phosphodiester bond. And this is the bond that connects nucleotides to each other. And I want you to remember that it, it's connecting the three prime carbon of one nucleotide to the five prime carbon of another nucleotide. And the reason it's so important to remember this is because in a few minutes, we'll see that this actually determines the orientation of DNA. But anyway, back to our phosphodiester bond, where do we get this name from? So let's just review uh, some organic chemistry terms. If I had a carbon, that was double bonded to an oxygen. We call a carbon like this a carbonyl. And let's say I had some sort of alkyl group here on the left, I'll call that R. It can be you know, any carbon chain. Then let's say this oxygen was attached to, an, this carbon was attached to an oxygen and I drew it um, kind of big so that we focus on it and notice that um, that's kind of what's playing a role in this molecule. And that oxygen would be attached to another alkyl group. And I'm gonna differentiate between the two alkyl groups by having the one on the left R and this one R prime. So a molecule like this is called an ester. And in particular, this bond between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen is called an ester bond. Now let's go to our phosphodiester bond. So in our phosphodiester bond, we don't have a carbon double bonded to an O, but a phosphorus double bonded to an O, hence the 
phospho part. It's an ester bond because that phosphate is attached to an oxygen, but it's not just attached to one oxygen, it's attached to two oxygens. So it's not just an ester bond, but it's a diester bond. So that's where we get this, um, this name, phosphodiester bond. And the phosphodiester bond is what connects two nucleotides to each other. And if we were to put together a couple of nucleotides, say about 10 to 20 nucleotides, that would be called an oligonucleotide. But then if we put together a couple of hundred or thousands of nucleotides, that would be called a polynucleotide. So let's take everything that we learned and try to piece together the 3D structure of DNA. Right over here, what kind of looks like the outside of a ladder, we have the sugar phosphate backbone. You can ignore the key on the bottom right for now. And maybe you recognize these as our sugar molecules. That's the deoxyribose molecules. And I'm actually just going to fill out some of the, fill out the oxygens on the molecules. Notice on this side they're pointing upwards, but on the other side they're pointing downwards. Let's actually fill in the carbons on our sugar molecules. So this carbon is one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. And I'm just going to do it on the next molecule as well. And we know that our phosphates, which are represented by this thick purple line, are connecting the three prime carbon and five prime carbon of the two sugars. So I'm actually gonna draw the phosphate, even though I just told you that that purple line represents the phosphates, I'm actually gonna draw little P's to show you how it connects the three prime and five prime carbon of two sugars. So we'll draw a P here, and then we'll draw a P connecting these two. So those are our phosphates. And let's do it on the other strand as well. So first, let's just fill in our carbons. I'll also put in the phosphates. So phosphate connecting the three prime and five prime, a phosphate over here and right over here. And notice that these two strands are oriented in opposite directions. They are what we call anti-parallel to each other, right? The oxygens uh, on the left strand are pointing upwards, on the right strand they're pointing downwards. And if we were to just pick the, let's say the top of what, the, you know, what looks like the outside of a ladder, let's say we just pick the top as a reference point. Notice on this strand on the left, there's a five prime carbon right over here. And then there's a three prime carbon over here, which I didn't label, but this is a three prime carbon. So again, if we pick the top as a reference point, we can see that this strand goes in the five prime to three prime direction. And let's look at the other strand. So at this end, we have a three prime carbon. And at this end, we have a five prime carbon. So we can say with reference to the top that this is going in the three prime to five prime direction. And it's important to remember this, the strands are in opposite directions, they're anti-parallel to each other. So what are we missing? Well, we're missing our nitrogen bases. Now we could take a look at the key on the bottom right-hand side, and it's just to help us keep track of which colors represent which nitrogen bases. And let's just fill in some bases. And I'm actually gonna draw them as circles just because it's easier and it saves time. So let's put a thymine here. Let's put a cytosine here. We'll put an adenine here, and I'm gonna draw two circles because adenine is a purine, it's a double ring structure. And then let's put a guanine here, also a double ring structure. And then of course on the other side, we have to fill in the complementary base. Thymine is going to go with adenine. Cytosine is going to go with guanine, etc. But our two strands are not yet connected. So we need to connect our strands. If you recall, what connects the nitrogen bases are hydrogen bonds. And A's and T's have two hydrogen bonds between them, whereas C's and G's have three. So let's fill in our hydrogen bonds. And 
And what we just did, putting together two strands of DNA, is known as hybridization. Another way to say this is annealing. And if we were to break down these two strands of DNA and kind of, you know, cut it down the middle by breaking those hydrogen bonds, that would be known as denaturation. So this finally brings us to the complete 3D structure of DNA, or what we know as the Watson-Crick model. So here is the Watson-Crick model of DNA. And Watson and Crick were two scientists that kind of put together all of the puzzle pieces and let us know what the structure of DNA is. You can see it's our two strands of DNA, but they're coiled in this double helix. So they form a double helix, double because it's two strands and helix because they're coiled around each other. And on the outside of this double helix, the gray strand and the white strand, that's the sugar phosphate backbone. And if, uh, let's say the gray strand was five prime to three prime, so we know that the other strand would be the opposite, it would be three prime to five prime. And on the inside of this structure, we have the nitrogen bases. So it's kind of like a ladder that's twisted around each other, the outside of the ladder being the sugar and the phosphate groups, and the inside of the ladder being the nitrogen bases.